Welcome to today's video. We're going to be talking about the Sisters of Battle Combat Patrol for Warhammer 40,000. So you might be wondering what we're doing and why we're doing it. This is, after all, mainly a Kill Team channel. Um, you know, I, I'm i kind of hyped for Combat Patrol, and I'm kind of hyped for 10th edition 40k. A big part of that is that I... I love Sisters of Battle. Uh, people who've been following this channel for a long time will know that uh, I think on the channel page it even says that this is a channel about like novitiates in Kill Team. Sadly, the novitiates didn't really gel with how I want to play Kill Team uh, mechanically because I like to shoot guns from range. Um, Games Workshop do a Celestian Kill Team. That that would be really good. Anyway, um, so you know, hype to play them. Um, hopefully, we can use this review of the Sisters Combat Patrol as a kind of framing device to help you understand what Combat Patrol is. So as I go through it, and I'm going to explain how it differs and how it's the same as sort of the main Warhammer 40,000, you can get an idea of what that might mean for the other Combat Patrols that you are more interested in. Um, I should say, full disclosure, I've yet to play 40k 10th edition at all, right? Just doesn't really fit in with what I'm doing. But, um... I am going to hope to play a game on Monday, which is the 31st of August, with, with in fact, the Sisters Combat Patrol. So, these are kind of my first impressions. Hopefully, that has, has value, uh, entertainment value, if nothing else, right? And I, it's a way of me doing my pre-reading for my game and trying to get sorted in my head what I'm going to try and accomplish and what I think, um, you know, what I think about things. And it's also an opportunity, I guess, to get any feedback. So, you know, if you've played Combat Patrol already, or if you've played 40k, or if you've played, especially if you've played the Sisters Combat Patrol, and you've got any hints, tips, tricks, ideas, please do feel able to let me know in, in the comments down below. That would be really useful to me. Um, so we're going to have to first of all start with a little bit of history. If you joined the hobby in the last five years or so, you might not realise that Plastic Sisters of Battle was a very anticipated release for decades. It was one of the most asked for um, things for Games Workshop to do. People really, really wanted Plastic Sisters of Battle. They were left with the same metal range that they've had since 2nd edition all the way until the very, very, very end of 7th edition, right? Um, you know, they even made the famous video. I've got a little still image from the video there when they were announcing like the first squat for Necromunda, uh, you know, about five years ago. And there's a an image of three clocks, like one's labeled squats, one labeled plastic sisters of battle, and one labeled plastic thunderhawk, which, you know, they've made good on all three of those now, although the plastic thunderhawk was only for Aeronaut's Imperialis. But the it was up there with squats and with the plastic thunderhawk as being one of those things that people really really want so when sisters were released for 40k for the very first time they came out with what is on the screen now which was the first if not if not the first perhaps one of the first of what's been uh, come to known as the uh, the fomo box right the fear of missing out box the the launch box if you're any more charitable about it uh, a box that's limited edition that comes out before the main range and uh, includes usually a limited edition codex with a special cover right now the sisters one was pretty unique i think in that the sprues in this launch box were for a time they were unique to this launch box so although you got a squad of sisters and a squad of seraphim they weren't the same as the multi-part sisters and the multi-part seraphim they were monopose with some interesting and fun unique sculpts so fast forward that now to the combat patrol and actually it turns out that the eighth edition combat patrol is just the sprues from this box Again, uh, plus the addition of a rhino, and the rhino is the full, the full plastic kit for the rhino. So you do have some unique sculpts and some slightly weird squad sizes because in this original box that was kind of a, it was really it was a, it was a, it was a sort of early selection box for the super fans. Uh, they wanted to give you a selection of the things that were were coming out for the army, like a representative selection. So you've got some weird squads of five and of three. So that, just to, to explain that, so let's look at, from the rules document, and this is all taken from the free downloads on the Games Workshop website, let's look at what's actually in the Combat Patrol. So, for those of you that aren't familiar with Combat Patrol, it's totally prescriptive uh, in terms of what you've got and how it's equipped, 
And in terms of the sisters' comet patrol, that's not really a huge problem because, like I say, the main they're monopose uh, models with uh, only a limited number of ways to build them. So you've got your Canoness, who, for the purposes of comet patrol, is given a name, Canoness Ellerine, I think. Okay, with a plasma pistol, a power weapon, and a rod of office. Um, more on that in a minute. You've got a Battle Sisters squad with a bolt gun, a bolt pistol, and chainsaw. Uh, uh, Six with the bolt pistol and the most can't weapon. One with uh, a Saccharum Imperialis. One with an Artificer Crafted Storm Bolter. And one with a Flamer, Mini Storm Flamer. You've got five Seraphim. The leader has a plasma pistol and a power weapon. And you've got four with two bolt pistols each. You've got your Repentia. Only five models. Four Repentia and one Repentia Superior. Three Archiflagellants, a Penitent Engine and a Rhino. So, before we get into the data sheets, let's just take one minute to look at the, um, the Army Ability Act of Faith. So, what I've done here, and you'll see this again on all the slides, the Kill Team version, is, which is what we're looking at today, is in this lovely green glowing effect. So, that's the Kill Team version. If I show other rules alongside, they're the rules for main 40k. So, basically, my main point with this slide is to say that the Act of Faith mechanic is totally unchanged from Big 40k. So if you start with Comet Patrol and you learn what Act of Faith is, the core Act of Faith mechanic itself doesn't change whatsoever. Um, this isn't true for all the Comet Patrol, so I understand for the Space Marine Comet Patrol, Oath of Moments slightly watered down, I think, in, um, in Comet Patrol compared to Big 40k, but Acts of Faith is completely as it is found in, in the main index, which is nice. Um, it ma makes it more of a credible thing for, for moving as a stepping stone for learning the big game. Uh, for those of you that don't know, because you haven't been immersed in, in, in the sort of 10th edition stuff, um, I'll just go through briefly what Act of Faith is. Rather than read it out all out, um, I'll, I'll, I'll summarise it, okay? So, um, at the start of every turn, and every time one of your units is destroyed, you generate a, a miracle dice. So, rather than have abstract points, like in Kill Team, you have Faith points, uh, in 40k, you physically pick up... The, usually, you'd use dice like a different colour or something. So, you pick up the dice and roll it. And then you put that rolled dice to one side with the with the correct sort of number facing up. Right? And then, you can perform an act of faith whenever you want to do an advance roll, a battleshock test, a charge roll, a damage roll, a hit roll, a saving throw, or a wound roll. And basically, you have to declare this before you roll the dice. So, you, you can't roll it and see that you failed and then modify it. You have to go, oh, instead of for rolling this hit roll, I'm going to substitute in an act of faith, and I'm going to hit because I've got a three in my faith pool, right? Now, there are some nuances to this, okay? So, first of all, if you're doing, like, a charge roll, you can only substitute in one of the two dice, okay? So, what this means is, say you have, um, you want to get a nine-inch charge because you've deep struck um, a unit that, that wants to be in combat, if you, you can substitute in a 6 for one of your charge dice, and then you're just trying to roll a 3-up to make your charge, right? You can't sub in sub in two dice. Uh, in terms of things like hit rolls, bear in mind the way that the way that 40k... This is one of the weirdest things about 40k. You get this in the head, and, and, you'll, have, and you'll have cracked some of the game. I think I could be wrong. The way that 40k is written... If you have five models with bolters, and so you, you, you know, you're making five bolter attacks, you're supposed to roll the first one, see if you hit, roll the next one, see if you hit, roll the next one, see if you hit, roll the next one, see if you hit, right? And then there's a little footnote somewhere that's like, well, the rules say that, but also, you know, fast dice, fast dice, you can just pick them all up and roll them if you want, but mechanically, you have to roll them one by one. So what that means in practice is, let's say you had a squad that was all shoot shooting, like you had bolter shots, how many you had, 5, 10, 15, 20, doesn't matter. If you were considering using an act of faith, what you would in practice be able to do is say, um, well, I might want to use an act of faith here to guarantee a hit with one of my bolters. Not that you would, but just go with the example. So let's say I had 20 bolters to roll. You could roll 19 of them together in one big lump. Look at how many hits that you had, and then decide whether you wanted to roll the last one 
or whether you wanted to sub in a faith dice for that last one where you could sub in a dice. Because you can only perform one miracle dice, one you know, one act of faith per per unit per phase. Okay? Now there are some things in the full index that can get around that rule, but for, for combat patrol you can only perform one act of faith per unit per phase. So you can only substitute in one dice per unit per phase. Okay? Um so yeah, there are some nuances to it, but essentially, it's quite straightforward, I think. Ah. I'm just rereading it now in case I've got that wrong. But I'm pretty sure... Yeah, Miracle Dice, we need before that, if I remove the... I'm struggling now to find out where it actually says one unit per... If you have one or more dice in your Miracle Dice pool, that unit can perform an act of faith. Yeah. I'm sure it's one per unit per phase. Dice being substituted is not rolled. Value, blah, blah, blah. One each, each miracle dice can only be set for substitution once. Once all miracle dice substitutions have been made, remove all chosen miracle dice from your miracle dice pool and roll all remaining dice. Uh, you can use miracle dice when you perform that. Um, yeah, oh, it's at the top. Each unit from your army can perform one act of faith per phase. This is done using Miracle Dice. Yeah, yeah. It is slightly confusing, right? Because at the top, it says each unit from your army can perform one act of faith per, per phase. This is done using Miracle Dice. And then down in the, par in the paragraph where it explains it in more detail, it's got this phrase here, once all Miracle Dice substitutions have been made, remove all chosen Miracle Dice from your Miracle Dice pool. Now that is because in big 40k there are some things that allow you to do more than one Miracle Dice per phase. Um, that rule is, this is copy and pasted from 40k. In Kill Team, it would be one per, per unit per phase and there's no way of getting around that, I don't think. Okay. I think I made that more confusing. If you ask some questions in the comments, I'll try and answer them. All right. Let's get on to looking through the um, the the index cards. So what I've done here is I've put the, again, the, the Kill Team unit card is on the right-hand side uh, with the green glow effect. And the corresponding 40K index card is on the left-hand side. Because I think it's interesting to see what they've done... Um, I'm going to get a laser pointer as well. I wish I had it on the previous slide, but I've got it now. Um, and it, I think it's going to be interesting to see what they've done and what they've changed. Because remember, Combat Patrol is supposed to be a simplified version of the game. Okay, now here's where we get into our ambiguities, first of all. So, it says, this is copy and paste from the first page. Can I ask Elreen, um, this model is equipped with plasma pistol, power weapon, rod of office. Okay. And you've got the rules here for the plasma pistol and the power weapon. It says it has a rod of office, but there's no there's no rule here for the rod of office. If we look over here on the left-hand side, in Big 40k, if you had a rod of office, each time you select the bearer's unit as the target of a stratagem, roll 1d6 on a 4-up, you gain 1 CP. I mean, that'd be really nice to have, but it's not on your card for combat patrol. So... And this isn't the only example of this in this combat patrol. So there's a bit of a question mark in my mind. Now, don't get me wrong. It's clear how it's played, right? Because it cannot possibly be actually played. Oh, well, it says you have the Rod of Office. So refer to the big 40k card um, to get that rule. Right, obviously not. It's not on the card for Comp Patrol, so it doesn't exist. The fact that it's mentioned here in the equipment list and then not mentioned on the card is weird and it does make me wonder if there's going to be an errata in the fullest of time for cart patrol that puts that ability in or takes that out of there or does something for now it's very clear it doesn't exist so don't worry about it but um it's just funny to me that it's there but it doesn't actually do anything okay apart from that right there are some other changes so you're a leader, you've got acts of faith. You've got an ability to lead the righteous. While this model is leading a unit, each time a model in the unit makes an attack, you can re-roll the hit roll, right? And that's the same as in Big 40k, you've got lead the righteous here. What you've lost is this second ability. So in Big 40k, 
the cannoness was able to once per battle at the start of any phase you can use the ability if it does until the end of that phase this model has a totally vulnerable save you don't have that ability in combat patrol they took it away from you to make it less um complicated and you don't have these war gear options that you have the null rod the rod of office as discussed right and you lock to the plasma pistol and the the power weapon which isn't bad now otherwise your stats are the same i would say the combat patrol danger sheets are really nice in my view because the invulnerable save is up here uh, with the stat block in all the combat patrol data sheets whereas on the main 40k data sheets the invulnerable save is like down here um and it's a little thing but i just far prefer having my invulnerable save up here with the the armor save you know so i can see my, all my saves at a glance rather than having to look here and look down here not sure why they decided to do that um, but certainly prefer the layout on this side. Now, we're going to talk about the enhancements. So, in Combat Patrol, your leader gets a free enhancement. You get to choose between two enhancements. Now, you're given a default enhancement and an optional enhancement. That has no mechanical effect. Um, it's just an advisory for new players that maybe the default enhancement is easier to use, less fiddly, that sort of thing. Um, so, we'll have a little look at those as well. So, the Armour of Faith... Uh, gives you a feel no pain four up. Now that's really good. Okay. In addition, while you're leading a unit, models in the unit have feel no pain five up. It's a really good enhancement. You know, you're playing a game where you've got relatively few units on a table. Okay. So having the tanky ability to have a feel no pain five up and a feel no pain four up on the leader itself, I would say is really, really good. I would say that's really, really good. Meanwhile, the optional enhancement. In your command phase, if the bearer is not battle shocked and is within range of an objective marker you control, you gain one miracle dice. In addition, while the bearer is on the battlefield, each time you gain a miracle dice, you can reroll that miracle dice. Now, that is really strong, don't get me wrong, because miracle dice are your core mechanic um, of your army. It's a thing that sort of sets you above everybody else. But I don't. <laughs> I don't know because I haven't played yet. I'm certainly going to start off with the default one. I worry about whether you... Can you be... How often are you going to find yourself on an objective? Now, maybe when I play a game, I play it and realise, actually, she starts on an objective, and then she moves on to another objective, and then she moves on to another objective, and actually these extra miracle dice are far more useful, as well as having the re-rolls. So maybe after my first game I'm going to pivot to the Saintly Relic, but I just don't quite see in my head. It's another thing to worry about, and I'm, you know, you're trying to think of the size of the table, the distance between the objectives, um, and how likely it is that you're going to get this squad on an objective every, every, every turn to get the most out of that but so i'll certainly start with the default i think that's wise right they've said one is the default but i am looking at the saintly relic and thinking actually might be worth pivoting to that saintly relic after a game or two so that's the canon s and the canon s can join our battle sister squad uh, it says that down here right so let's move on and look at the battle sister squad so here's the battle sister squad Battle Sister Squad is 10 models. The superior has to have a bolt gun and a, a chainsaw, which is a little unfortunate. You'd never take a sergeant with a bolt gun in the big game because you could have a free plasma pistol or, or condemn a stake crossbow thing or combi weapon or whatever you wanted to do, but it is what it is. Six bolt of battle sisters, which is fine. Uh, one battle sister is equipped with a bolt gun, a bolt pistol, a close combat weapon, and a saccharilum imperialis. And again, they call it out there, right? But the rule here, this is in Big 40k, the Saccharine Imperialis getting extra miracle dice when you destroy a unit, it's not present in Combat Patrol. So why is there this disconnect where here it says that you've got something and then you look at your card and it's like it doesn't actually it doesn't actually do anything. Okay? And then you've got a flamer um, and, a, and a storm bolter. So you've got the stats for those up there. Um, Sisters Flamers, just like in Kill Team, Sisters Flamers are... Mini Storm Flamers, you know, you got your Mark Spencer Flamer, which does get to be Strength 5, which is, you know, pretty good. Um, you know, 12-inch range, D6 attack, Strength 5 is not actually a bad weapon at all. So, not a bad little squad. 
they've lost a couple of abilities, so you don't have the Cherub. So once a battle after this unit is performed an act of faith, you gain one Miracle Dice. You haven't got that idea of a Cherub with a Cherub token. I'm trying to remember, I don't actually think that the box set for these, the original box set, came with the Cherub. And so that's probably the reason that's gone. You also lost the Defenders of the Faith ability. So these sisters, you uh, in Big 40k, they generate a Miracle Dice when they're on an objective. Right now, you can get that back by joining the canoness to them, and you will be joining the canoness to them and taking that optional enhancement for sure. But in Big 40k, they have that kind of ability baked in, okay. Whereas in this, they then they have gained a new ability, they've gained the ability patrol squads. So, at the start of the battle, before the battle, at the start of the declare battle formation squared step, sorry, squared. This unit can be split into two units, each containing five models. If you do so, one of these units must contain the model equipped with the Flamer, and the other must contain the model with the Storm Bolter. So if you wanted to, you could split them off and have a more ranged unit and a more aggressive unit. I don't think it's very wise. For partially because if you're taking the Armour of Faith... You want to have that big group of ten, all with the feel no pain five up. It's got anti synergy with armor with 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 armor of faith. Now, if you're taking uh, the saintly relic, I can see a little bit more of an argument for it because you can have one squad that maybe you fling forwards in the rhino and one squad that hangs back, kind of standing on objectives. But I think at least to start off with, I'm not going to split them. I'm going to keep them in a big block of ten. I'm going to be using that feel no pain to have ten ten sisters all with uh, feel no pain five up. I think that's, that's pretty good. And they got a 6 point vulnerable save, which is nice. Uh, the Seraphim Squad. So, again, you got a Seraphim Squad. Now, the main thing with the Seraphim Squad is in big 40k, Seraphim can have um, two sisters with two Flamer Pistols each, or two sisters with two Melter Pistols each. And basically, you've lost that ability to, to have those special weapons. You've got to have ones with with bolters so you've got four sisters with twin bolt pistols but your leader does have the plasma pistol and the power weapon other than that though the seraphim are unchanged so you've got a massive movement of 12 okay you've got a five up invulnerable save you've got the fly keyword you can deep strike and you've got the amazing angelic ascent rule so in your shooting phase after the unit's shot if it's not within engagement range it can make a normal move of up to six inches Okay, and then it can't declare a charge. So they can come down, they can shoot, and then they can move six inches after they've shot, right? Which is really rather good, okay? You know, really good for, for, for trying to get onto an objective or something like that. So really, really happy to see that they haven't lost their kind of cool rule because a recurring thing with combat patrol is a cool little rule like that is, is the kind of thing that will be excised. So it's nice to see they haven't lost that. Yes, they have lost their flamers or, or melter pistols, but you know we, we we can accept that because that's what you get in the in the in the in the funny box that you have with these models. In they come with four with bolt pistols and a sergeant. Okay, um, so that's pretty cool. Repentia. So the Repentia are totally unchanged, except that it's only half a squad. Right, so for the Repenti, you are capped at five models. So you got four with the Eviscerator and the Penitent Superior. So the Superior, um, when you make a melee attack, you can reroll a hit roll, and if you charge, you can reroll a wound roll as well. So loads of rerolls. You got a five up, uh, feel no pain. You've got a six up in von, okay, um, and you've got your Penitent Eviscerators that are strength six, AP two, damage two. Hitting on fours, two attacks each. So they got, a, with re-rolls, though, so they got a decent chance of doing something, you know, depending on what you charge them into. You do only have four eviscerators, and then one set of your neural whips, four dice hitting on three, strength three, AP minus one, meh, okay? It's kind of annoying that you've only got half a squad, okay? But they should do something, you know, depending on what you depending on what you hurl them into, I would say. I, I, I would say, okay? You know, obviously, you got, you're only toughness three. You're not going to stand up to much in the way of shooting, so you need to have a plan for how you're getting these into combat because if, if you're walking them up the field, they'll get shot and die. <laughs> okay? Yeah, they got the field no pain five up, which is nice, but there's only five of them. And their basic save is a, a seven plus, which means that they haven't got a save unless they're in cover. Okay? So... 
you, you need to deliver them. You, you need to deliver them if you're going to use them. But if they get into combat, when they get into combat, I mean, the newer whips are anti inventory 4 plus as well, which is nice. Yeah. So you get them into combat, they are going to kill stuff, which is nice. Especially if you get them into combat with something that's a shooty squad that doesn't really want to be in combat with you. Right. Arco flagellants are a little bit sad. Um, you know, because there's only three of them. Um, so you have three Arco flagellants. Yeah, the Arco Flail is a good weapon. Sustained hits one twin linked, four attacks. Hitting off four, strength five, which is not bad, right? Um, but you've only got three of them. And they've lost their extremist trigger word look. So Arco Flagellants have this really cool ability uh, in Big 40k. When you select fight, you can invoke that trigger word. If you do, then um, the, they, they go up from four attacks to six. But they gain hazardous, which basically gets hot, right? So on ones, they take wounds, which is funny and cool. A big unit of 10 of these with, with, with that turned on will mint stuff. A little unit of 3 is going to struggle to do very much. Uh, again, some teams, you know, I'm thinking about, like, um, the Chaos Space Marines kill team, uh, Combat Patrol. We've got, like, a five-man Havoc squad, you know? You get, you get the three of these into a five, you know, like, a heavy weapons squad doesn't really want to be in combat with something. If you manage to get a favorable matchup, you know, you might do something. Right, you've got Axe of Faith, you've got your Feel No Pain 4 up, which is a very swingy ability. You might do something with three little models, but really they're there to be annoying, you know? Now, if you play 40k properly, um, and you listen to the chat online, people really love taking units of three Arco Flagellants. Because if we go all the way back, all the way back to Axe of Faith, you gain an Axe of Faith every time a unit from your army is destroyed. So people who play like in a in a slightly beardy way or whatever you want to call it, they're quite fond of having these little units of two or little units of three, send them forward to die, and it's like great, free miracle dice. Um it's not very many points. Now obviously in Cart Patrol, we don't care about the points, right? Because we just have what we have. So it's not making it do as much work as um as much work as it can before it dies. But there is that benefit when they do die, you will get a miracle dice back, which is nice. Yeah, which is nice. Uh, Penitent Engine. So, Penitent Engine is just really cool. Really, really pleased to see the Penitent Engine didn't you lose its ability at all, okay? It, and its ability is a real doozy. It can charge in advance, which is... I mean, it's got an 8-inch move as it is, but on a, a really small board, like a Comet Patrol board, this thing has got a massive threat radius, potentially. Remember, you can always sub in a Miracle Dice as well. Sub in a 60 charge roll, if you have one, to try and get a really long charge roll with it. Um, it's just everywhere it wants to be. Now, its loadout's locked. It's locked to its twin penitent buzz blades, uh, melee, uh, four attacks, hitting on four, strength 10, AP minus three, damage two, uh, twin linked. But honestly, I think the, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if you if you know better, but I think out of all the options that you can get from the proper multi-part kit, I think the penitent buzz blades, the twin penitent buzz blades, is actually the one you go for if you're being a meta kind of a guy, picking the right stuff. So, the, the, this is just perfect this is just everything nothing you know yeah like the seraphim you, you, you they've, they've chosen a loadout for you but the loadout they've chosen happens to be probably the loadout that you would pick okay um so that's pretty cool competent attention can't can't complain and then finally we've got a rhino so the rhino is a little bit sad okay so rhino for again for anyone that doesn't know rhino is a pretty basic transport transports 12 models okay um and the rhino Sisters Rhino has a six with vulnerable save, just like in Big 40k, which is good. And you got your firing deck uh, two and deadly demise D3, Axe of Faith. The Rhino's lost self repair, okay? So in Big 40k, it can regrow its wounds. It can regain a lost wound in the command phase. It doesn't do that in Comet Patrol. And it's also lost the ability to take a hunter killer missile, which is a real shame because those hunter killer missiles are really, really good. Uh, especially in, in a format where the Epo owner might have like one vehicle. It'd be really nice to have uh, a hunter killer missile. Alas, not an option for our uh, not an option for our Rhino in Comet Patrol to take that hunter killer missile. But um apart from that, it's a rhino, it does rhino things. Uh, it's going to be very useful to how you actually play the, the, the game, right? So let's talk a little bit about stratagems. So the stratagems in Combat Patrol are totally different and bear a little bit of explanation, I, I feel. So you've got three. Uh, I'm going to read through them. So Divine Protection. When your opponent's shooting phase or the fight phase, just after an enemy unit selected its target... 
Uh, one Adeptus Rotas unit from your army that was selected as the target of an attacking unit's attacks. Until the end of the phase, models in your unit have a 5 up invulnerable save, or a 4 up invulnerable save if they were the Battle Sister squad or the Seraphim squad. So the opponent says, I'm shooting them, you spend a command point and you gain an invulnerable save. A better invulnerable save than you already had. Which is pretty good, um, especially on that since the battle squad if you've already got the cannon s in it giving them feel no pain like you can make an obnoxiously obnoxiously tanky sisters squad for a turn if it needs to be if it's on like a central objective you're like well i'm going to spend a command point to have a four up invulnerable save and then i've got my feel no pain after that you know so that's potentially pretty good uh what it's really all about here though is holy cleansing um, so holy cleansing in your shooting phase or fight phase you select one infantry unit from your army that you haven't yet shot or fought with and until the end of the phase it gains lethal hits so imagine this on your sister's battle with all of their bolter shots and their flamer and their storm bolter imagine this on your seraphim that you've just put down behind something you'd really like to kill you know with their twin bolt pistols suddenly automatically wounding on a six um, it's pretty good now this sounds really ridiculously good. You've got to remember that combat patrol, the stratagems are how they balance the combat patrols. So if you look at combat patrol, which happens to have lots of really strong units in the box, they'll have quite weak stratagems. Whereas here for the sisters, like sisters don't have, they don't have any melter guns in the box. They don't have any ranged anti-tank weapons at all. So they've been given this access to lethal hits. Um, you know, because you could come up against, and I think I will come up against, I think Zimbad's taken the Dark Angels can't patrol with the Dreadnought. So, you come up against the Dreadnought, you, you've you not got much, apart from the Penitent Engine, if it gets in combat with it, but even then a Dreadnought quite likes combat as well, has a big power fist. So, you've not got much for killing something like a Dreadnought, right? So, this Holy Cleansing is really there to enable you to punch at those kinds of, of, of vehicles, Right? And then you've got Martyr's Death, which is exactly the same as uh, Spirit of the Martyr from the Hallow Martyr Detachment in Big 40k. And it's a, it's, a, it's a fight on death. So if you're in combat in the fight phase, until the end of the phase, each time a model unit is destroyed, if it's not fought this phase, don't remove it from play. The destroyed model can fight after the attacking model's unit has finished making its attacks. And it's removed from play. It's quite good, but it's 2 CP. And I don't think it's... I don't think it's as good as, gonna, as as two uses of Holy Cleansing is going to be, right? Which is the problem with Martyr's Death, in, in, especially in this team where, yeah, you've got combat units, but they're like um, a five-man squad and a three-man squad, right? Whereas you, you've got a big ten-model sister squad. And, and another reason not to split your sister's squad, right? Because you can use one CP on Holy Cleansing and give them all lethal hits. So I really think splitting that sister squad might be a mistake. But there you go. I think Holy Cleansing is really key. Yeah, and then, so that's the three stratagems. Uh, we're not quite... You've got secondaries. So again, just like Kill Team, but you've only got two. And just like the um, enhancements, you've got kind of a recommended default pick and one you can swap it out for if you, if you want to. Now, I'm really torn on these ones. I'll go through them quickly. Divine Judgment up here. At the start of the first battle round, your opponent must select one unit from their army, excluding monsters and vehicles and at the end of the battle you score 6 vp if you've destroyed it and if you destroy it with a melee attack you score 10 vp instead and then you've got or you can swap that out for your secondary objective from the second battle round onwards at the end of your turn you score 3 vp if one or more sisters unit from your army that are not battle shocked are wholly within your opponent's deployment zone now i'm torn here because as you know from my kill team content I tend to hate secondaries that give your opponent control like that, that your opponent can nominate who you have to kill, right, or where you have to go, or what you have to do. But in, kill, in, in combat patrol, they've got so few units, and the fact they can't nominate a really big monster or vehicle that you're going to struggle to kill as well, they have to nominate an infantry, uh, an infantry squad. Um... They're not going to nominate a whole ass infantry squad and then be able to hide it and have it play no part in the game because they've only got a limited number of resources. So I think Divine Judgment might be easier. Uh, Rites of Reconsecration seems trickier. It is the only justification I can find for splitting your sister's squad, perhaps. Um, just to give you more things that are potentially in your opponent's zone. But I think 
even then I'd probably want to stick it, because even then, really, then I'm probably hoping to score it with the big ten-man sisters squad in the Rhino, aren't I, if I'm doing Rites of Reconsecration. Yeah, this is quite tactical because there's a couple of different ways of playing the of playing the thing and, and getting places. So I'm I'm going to show you. I'm going to tell you. And Zimbad's probably watching this and writing it down because I'm going to play him this on Monday, so he'll know my my plans. Um, but my basic plan is to embark the Arco flags and the Repentia in the Rhino, right? And then you barrel the Rhino forward turn one. If you can't finish off in cover, spend a CP to pop the smoke on the Rhino. It's a core strategy. And then just sit there and hope you don't die for a turn. And then turn two, you can get out and move and charge. You know, get out the stationary rhino and move and charge two separate targets with the Arcoflagellants and the Repentius. Because they're so soft, doing anything else, they'll just get shot to death. Meanwhile, your Battle Sisters squad, you're going to start with the home objective. It sits on the home objective. It It's battle line, so it can secure it for the rest of the game. And then it moves off to just try and walk towards the next objective, shooting its rapid fire guns and stuff as it goes. Um, being really hard to shift with that feel no pain um, save and invulnerable saves and things like that. Meanwhile, you've got your Seraphim in reserve, bring them down, turn two, and try and use them to, to pressure a backfield objective. And your Penitent Engine just runs around like a nutcase, charging something that gets within its massive threat radius. Uh, I think that's the plan. I mean, you could do other things. If you wanted to try that different secondary about getting a unit into your opponent's deployment zone, you could possibly try putting different things in the Rhino. But this is certainly my thought for my first game that I'm going to have in a couple of days on, on Monday. Right, here endeth the lesson. Um, so, final thoughts. So, if you want to know how it went, uh, there should be... It's not 100% nailed on. There should be a hobby stream on Tuesday. I might have to cancel it at the last minute because of real life stuff. I will let you know via the community tab. But the plan at the moment is to have a hobby stream on Tuesday. And one of the topics in the hobby stream can be reflections on the game that I will have on Monday with Zimbad. So I can give you more of a kind of after action review of how it felt and how it was. All right. Um, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed the video because... If this is the sort of content that people like, if people are interested in these combat patrol rundowns, uh, I can do one for all the different factions. And there's a, a lot of factions in combat patrol, so that gives me something to talk about once a week for, you know, a number of weeks going forward, right? But I don't want to do it if it's going to be ridiculously unpopular. I feel like I can definitely get away with doing one, because in one video, as I've hopefully done, I can expand about a lot of my thoughts about combat patrol in general, and, and just I'm using the, the sisters patrol as a, as a framing device. But certainly, the comparison to what they do in Big 40k, and so I kind of have in my head, well, in Big 40k they can do this, but in combat patrol they only do these things. That is definitely something I wanted, because I do aspire to play 1,000-point games and 2,000-point games of full 40k. So I want to have in mind, like, well, I'm doing this, but later on I'll be able to do that, like, in my head. So, to me, they're useful, but I definitely need feedback from you guys before I embark on a whole series. So do you want other videos of this style uh, for all of the other comment patrols? Let me know. Um, have I missed anything super obvious? Like I say, I've not played any 40k yet. I I'm going to play it on Monday. Um, so if I've missed something, or if you have an answer to that, like, question about the, the Saculum Imperialis or the Rod of Office and the fact that they are referred to in the rules, but then they don't have anything they refer to in the rules, let me know in the comments. And just in general, consider subscribing, uh, liking the video if you like it. Join the Discord. If you expand the comment down below under the video, you find a link to the Discord. It's over 100 members now. It's going really well. Uh, channel membership. If you have a surplus of cash, why not? Uh, all the things, all the things that make Discord people, uh, Discord people, YouTube people like me, happy and contented. And hopefully, I'll see you on Tuesday for the live stream. I'll be able to let you know how it actually went when um, my plans have to make first contact with the enemy. All right, well, that's been me for th nearly 40 minutes rambling on. So, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again next time. Cheery bye.